Yo, what up? Welcome back to another quick Flutter tutorial. In this one, I'm going to show you how to read data from an API and display it back in our Flutter apps. I'm a big NBA fan, so I'm going to use a basketball API to teach you these important concepts in a really simple way. So I've opened up a brand new Flutter project and just to keep everyone on the same page, in my main function, I'm running my app which brings us to our homepage, which is just a blank scaffold. So you should just have a blank app like this. And the first thing to do is we need to import a HTTP package. So this is a very common package that allows us to make requests to the internet. So let's copy this and go to your pubspec.yaml and we're gonna paste this in and save it and close that once that's done. And the other thing actually is we need to get an API. So I'm going to link this API below. It's a basketball API and it's free. So it should be good for us to use this to learn. <laughs> I love how there's the Michael Jordan crying meme. And if you scroll down, you can see we can make HTTP requests for different things. Like we can get the players and then it will display it as a JSON data like this. Now I'm going to go to the one that has teams. So once we make this request, we're going to get this sort of JSON data and I'll show you how to sort of decode it and put it into our Flutter apps. So if you come back to our code, let's create a method to get the teams. Now this one is going to be a feature because when we make a request, it's going to take some time to get the data from the internet, maybe like a few milliseconds or something. So the data will return sometime in the future. So that's why we're using a future method. And let's just create a variable called response and make sure to import the HTTP package at the top. And now we can say await HTTP and get the URL. So let's choose the HTTPS and here you can put the URL in. So come back to the API and let's just copy this, paste it in. Now, if you hover over, over this, you can actually see the way they want us to put in the URL. So you can see in the green, the example. So it looks like we don't put the HTTPS, you just put the domain and also separate the path, right? So I'm just gonna get rid of this part and also the www and let's grab the path and just separate it like this. So that's how they want us to structure it. And just to show you what we're actually getting from this, let's print the body of the response. So if I just run this and I open my debug console, after a little bit of time, you can see we get this. And so that is essentially the data that we get. But it looks like for us, it's just a big ass string. So we're going to have to sort of decode this to make it readable, right? So let's create the JSON data and let's use the JSON decode. And what we can do with this now is do a quick for loop and say, okay, each team in the JSON data. And if you actually go back to the API, it looks like it's split up into two sections here. So you got the data and then the meta, but I'm interested in the data. So that's why I put that in here and let's get each team. Now to do this, let's actually create a team model. So let's just create a quick class here and I'm just going to keep it real simple. So let's get the strings for the abbreviation and the city and create the constructors for these. So what I mean is, for example, like LAL for Los Angeles Lakers and the city is Los Angeles. OK, so I'm just getting a couple of parameters from our API. Cool. So now that we've created this class, we can now come back to this for loop and create an individual team. And then let's add it to a list, which we should make right now. Let's create a list of teams. So in the for loop, after we create each team, let's add it to our list of teams. Sweet. Now, just to see if this actually worked, let's just print at the end of this, the length of our list of teams. So we should hopefully have 30 teams in the NBA. And there it is, 30. Cool. So it looks like it's working. So now that we have all of the teams in our list, let's display it in our actual app. So come down to the scaffold and in the body, we're going to use something called a future builder. So remember how when we make a request, it takes a little bit of time to get the information, right? So 
That's why we're going to use a future builder. And the future that we're waiting for is the get teams method. So while that's loading, we can create a builder and consider two different scenarios. So the first one is if it's done loading or not. So is it done loading? If it is, then let's just show the team data. And then else, if it's still loading, then let's show a loading circular progress indicator. Okay, so if you look at this snapshot, it actually tells us a lot of good information. For example, like this connection state, we can check if it's done, you know, waiting, etc. So I'm just going to go with done. And if it's done loading, then let's return a list view, which I've made many tutorials on. So check that out if you need. But in the list view, I want to return a list tile. And in the title, let's just return the name of the team. Cycling through each index, let's print out the abbreviation. Cool. And if it's still loading, then I want to return in the middle just a circular progress indicator. So let's see if this works. Cool. So you can see that it's got a little loading circle. So it's a good idea to let the user know that some information is actually getting loaded right now. And sick. Looks like we got our 30 teams here. And it looks like we have a bit of an index error. And that's because we didn't specify the item count. So we just want to display the length of our list of teams. Cool. And honestly, that's really it. That's how you read data from an API. And from here, it's just really the fun part, I would say. You know, we can fill out the subtitle and the name of the city. And then you can just start decorating it, you know, the UI part of it. So I would say that's just really the fun part. But the main thing that I want you to take away from this video is how to read data from an API and convert it to a JSON data that we can actually read and display back onto our app. So that's actually all I had planned for this tutorial. Now I want to make this NBA app into a kind of like a stats app to show the stats of each players and maybe even like the live scores of the games and things like that. So from here we can actually just continue building on but I hope you learned something from this. I'll put the appropriate links below. So play around with it and let me know how that goes. But other than that, thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.